I think a major part of a professor's job is to help us understand the way the world works. We're not a training school. It's not a vocational college. It's an intellectual institution training people to think. And by thinking about something admittedly as weird as this, and I admit it's pretty weird, it expands people's minds. And it might get them to think differently about a whole bunch of things in their own lives than they otherwise would have. That's one argument. The other argument, though, is this does feed into policy. Uh, not in the U.S., certainly, but in France, they had a bunch of people urging Sarkozy to stop thinking about unemployment and GDP and start measuring national happiness. Okay? And there's a similar commission now been appointed by Frau Merkel in Germany to look into this. This will not happen here, but uh, you know, the rest of the world does matter. And what this study shows, if A, you believe that people can't change their looks very readily, which a bunch of studies that show that, that I talk about in the book, and B, that beauty affects happiness substantially, which I've shown it does. If you can't change beauty and beauty matters happiness, that means you can't change happiness that much because people are stuck with the looks they've got. And therefore, why should governments, like in France and perhaps Germany, be worrying about it? So that's a direct implication to policy. The other thing, of course, is this matters in terms of putting a size on the effects. Let's say I'm really ugly and I'm terribly bothered. This tells us, and my study and many other people tell us, that in fact, yes, this is a debility, but it's not one that's an absolute disaster. Putting a magnitude on something that people know is there is important. And that's one of the things that, one of the many things I think this book does, gives a feel for the magnitude of this kind of effect.